My question is, since we're not the first district to consolidate in the United States, it's actually um, a very important rural issue. Many other states have done this. Who's gonna do the research on their experiences so that we cannot make the same mistakes? And I did a little research um, that represents that only the extremely small districts, less than 300 pupils, actually have the greatest percent savings. And my research shows that consolidation would be with 4,000 students from OC4, 7,000 with OC5, I don't have the numbers for the other, but the research I did shows that after a certain, um, this is the term I can't find in my notes, there's um, less of a cost benefit when you get higher numbers consolidating. But, but my larger point is if we're not the first to do it, why wouldn't we look at other studies that have been done and learn from their mistakes or maybe not make, you know, not make the same mistakes? Um, I think that's an excellent question, and um, uh, basically, what her question comes down to do comes down to is in terms of uh, whether you whether you get the benefit of the bang for the buck in terms of if you consolidate and become uh, a larger district as opposed to the small districts. Uh, I think the term that you're looking for is economies of scale. And um, at this point, you know, again, we moved from three districts, I mean, eight districts down to three. Uh, and in terms of whether we can uh, have an additional benefit in terms of economies of scale from going from three to one, uh, again, I'm not sure. Uh, I think that's one of the questions that I would have down on my list uh, before agreeing to anything like that to see whether it would make a difference. I'm uh, Greg Cranford, and if you go to orangeburgcounty.org and you hit on the school governance icon, you can see the bill that was introduced last session, and it can answer many questions for you. Um, you'd have to have a referendum before any of the high schools would be closed and you would have to have, a, I think, two public hearings before any elementary or middle schools are closed. Uh, I don't have an opinion one way or the other on consolidation. Uh, my only, I do have a few concerns. If it does pass, school board elections would be held in uh, even-numbered years. I think it's best to keep school board elections in odd numbered years when we have our other nonpartisan elections for the different municipalities in the county. Another concern I have is that <clears throat> the new school board would have nine members, and I feel that three of the proposed districts for electing school board members would elect people who are pro Cynthia Wilson. And I would hate to see her be superintendent for the entire county because she's done a horrible job in Orangeburg 5. I feel the fairest thing to do is to use the county council districts to elect a new countywide school board because that would be the simplest thing for the voters to understand. Each of the seven county council districts would elect a county council member like we currently do and also elect a school board member to a countywide school board. My name is Janet Anderson, and I work with City Councilwoman Liz Zimmerman Kitt in Orangeburg at her after school center. My concern is why has Senator Matthews and Huddle and others not talked to you guys? What's the problem? Why has there been no communication there about something? as important as school consolidation because it's going to, if it goes into effect, it's going to affect, have a significant impact on all of our schools in Orangeburg County. Hey, thank you very much. Um, yeah, yeah, that one, that one will move around better. Uh, I think that's a very, very, very valid point. 
Um, again, um, the only thing, and as I stated earlier, we have not had any formal discussions as a delegation uh, in terms of consolidation, details, etc. cetera. Uh, and the only bill that's out there is the one that was introduced by the Senate. Um, and as Mr. Cranford pointed out, you can go to the website and see what's there. But um, the House uh, did not take up consolidation because we never got a bill. So a bill was not sent over. I think that uh, in all fairness, um, that good judgment prevailed and uh, instead of sending a bill over which I know that I wasn't prepared to vote on and support uh, having I had, based on the questions that you had here tonight, I think uh, it was felt that we needed to be transparent about this and the senators decided not to send the bill over. And I think that was a good move. Um, I think before you do anything uh, such as major as consolidation, we should do exactly like you said. We need to talk about it. I think we need to be transparent. The public needs to have a clear understanding of what you're doing, why you're doing it, and the impact that it's going to have on the community. Uh, because consolidation, we know, is not does not occur effectively unless you develop a consensus, a broad consensus, and have people accept it. Uh, and we saw that in our own history here in Orangeburg County. So I think that that's a very valid point. Uh, that is why, you know, one of the first things I did when I heard of the rumor about a bill coming through was basically to take the position that as far as I was concerned, we're not going to do anything as far as member of the House, I was uh, until we could develop consensus and hear what people had to say. So, 